Joseph, what are your um, tips for gaining the strength to walk away? Well, I, the first thing, like has been mentioned, thankfully by FIFA and Shivani, is realizing that one, you are worth choosing yourself. And two, you get the right people around you. And based on those right people, this is the danger in having certain people around you. It's that someone once came to their friends with their problems about things they've experienced and their friends basically laughed them off. And so what that does is that it then cements into their minds that this thing you're talking about is not worth it. You are like, don't even mention it to anybody. So for me, the first step that I will consider is look at your environment. Because if you want to get the strength to talk about something, first you need to be comfortable enough to say something to someone who won't damage your mental health after that point. Mm. Because just seeing someone after opening up like that, for instance, somebody gets into a, has a friend who they tell that, oh, I've been abused by someone before. Let's say he's a guy, a man tells his friend that a woman abused me once. Nine out of 10 times, your friend's going to laugh you off. Right. Especially in this society where we live in, they're going to just laugh you off. It's like, is that all? Like, what are you talking about? So you then do to that person and tell that person that your problem is not worth it. So for me, the first thing you would do is look at your environment. Try and ask yourself, the people around me, if I were to open up to them, would they lift me up or would they bring me down? Because finding the strength is good. But when you then find the strength and then you tell someone and it's so painful and it's so real to you and you are in pain and you're hurting, you're waiting for comfort, you're waiting for solace, and the person laughs you off, it damages something that almost becomes hard to fix. Because now your trust is broken twice. Yeah. First by user and now by somebody you trust. So getting you to open up a second time to somebody else will almost be impossible. So with the first step, look at the people you are with, like before mentioned. Make sure you have people around you who you are comfortable enough to say, this is what happened to me. And they are not going to shun you. They will not add problems that you don't need to you. They will lift you up. They will comfort you. They will help you get help. And they will not treat you like a victim, like someone who is damaged. They will treat you as a human being who has been through a difficult experience and is trying to get out of it. This is, yeah, this is very interesting because it, it touches on what FIFA was saying earlier in that she didn't want people to feel sorry for her. She just wanted to be heard. And that then circles around to having the right people around you so that you're getting that feedback. Okay, Adenike, um, what would you say your top tips for strengthening yourself to leave a abusive relationship or something of that nature okay um for me i i think the first thing i always suggest is that you understand that you are not to be blamed okay um, one of the things that the abusers use is making you feel guilty like oh you played a part in this mm. Okay, so if you're telling people, tell them about your part. And most times, narrative we give that narrative from that angle. Okay, I remember when I was in school, one of the case of sexual personal case I had um, when I was in school, someone broke into my room and um, wanted to rape me. And um, okay, almost did. Then it became a tug of war. And uh, okay, because for me, I was I would rather die than have you rape me as. I don't even know why I thought like that, but man, I I couldn't live with this. You know, I'm a Christian, and man, I'm I'm keeping myself pure for my husband, and I'm waiting all these years, and you're going to come rape me, man. Okay, so we had um, it was the night, and we had to fight for, you know, for a while. And while this was going on, I was shouting. Okay, I was shouting, hoping that my neighbors would 
here because this is just one person in my room. Okay, I was shouting, I was eating things. And you know, the way I most, um, there's a door, my next door neighbor, what divided our room is a door. Okay, so I know that he could hear me. Okay, so the talk continued until the guy finally left. Okay, because the shout was getting too much for him to, um, he knew that I was no longer safe or he felt he was no longer safe. But guess what? Until the guy left, ran out of the compound, nobody came out. Until I knocked on doors for them to come out, nobody came out. Okay, and by the time they came out, the first thing was, why didn't you lock your door? Like, <laughs> like okay. I did not ask anyone to come into my room, even if I left my door open. Okay, I know that was, I had to leave them, you know, I had to leave them. And when I saw I was angry, they asked me to come into the, their room and sleep and all that. But each time I want to talk about it, each time they want to tell the story to another person, they would say she forgot to lock her door. So someone came in. Okay, and I had to get to the point, before I could tell people around me, I had to get to the point where I told myself, even if I left my door open, no one had the right to enter my room to do that to me. Okay, 